After a Minecraft theory goes wrong, I fall into an ocean and wake up in a new dimension. This is Minecraft Into the Abyss. In day 6, it was time to go to war with the phantoms. What I really needed was better armor, and the key to better armor was getting as many phantom souls as I could. Unfortunately, I take back what I said about the eyeball mobs, phantoms had to be the most annoying mob to take down. I'll give you an example. This is what taking down a phantom should look like. Sneaking up, getting a few good hits, and getting the phantom soul, and you're done. This is what not to do. And that's charge it head on. And there's a few reasons why you don't do this. One, they give you wither. Two, they give you slowness. Three, they give you hunger. And four, well, they give you blindness. And they happen to be 10 blocks in the air. So all of those combined do not add up to a good experience. I went looking for more resources for my new armor, and I ended up unexpectedly finding another monolith, which was great because I didn't have any of the four I needed for the final boss. I just grabbed it and got out of there so I didn't have to deal with all of those mobs. But when I was leaving, I actually found the elder bosses for the first time. There were two of them, and they were level 10, and he started charging me so fast. But he didn't do any damage. And what do you know, he was super easy to take down, and didn't drop anything. So... Very disappointing, so I took down the other one because they baited me so many times. This was just revenge for all the anticipation. I came across another tower, and to my surprise, there were actually iron blocks, and that was just what I needed for my new armor, so I decided to mine them all up. When I was leaving, I found one of those teleporting mobs shooting at me, but when I tried to attack it, he fled the scene yet again. Okay, it was time to really get working on my new armor. I got sand, which was perfect, because I was going to need to smelt it for glass to make glass bottles. There were two very strong types of armor I was going for, and they were related to each other, and you'll see why. I went ahead and made the glass bottles. After, I used all the phantom souls I collected, along with titan bones in the corner, to make one phantom essence. I used this essence and surrounded it with four pieces of iron to get one phantom ingot. Now, fortunately for me, I already made unknown armor. All I had to do was put my armor in the crafting table with one phantom ingot, and I got a phantom chestplate which was much stronger. I put the chestplate on, and it looked very cool, but I wasn't stopping there. There was armor that was even stronger than phantom armor. I made another phantom ingot, but this time I wasn't going to use the ingot for armor. I used it with six more titan bones and got a unirith ingot. And now, I combined my phantom chestplate with the unirith ingot to get a unirith chestplate. This was the strongest chestplate in the game. The chestplate gave me permanent resistance effect. I went back to the phantom biome to get more titan bones. I just had to repeat this process three more times for every piece of armor. I made more phantom ingots and started working on making the leggings. I got the phantom leggings, crafted another unirith ingot, and finally used the unirith ingot to make unirith leggings. I accidentally dropped them, but after picking them up, I put them on, and I got permanent fire resistance. Very unfortunately, I had to get more phantom souls, and you already know what that meant. More rage-inducing events. So I'm just gonna let you all watch my suffering here. No commentary, only pain. That's all there is to see. Yeah, this one did not really go my way. Okay, but after an hour of hiding, I finally got one more phantom soul. I made Unirith boots, and when I put them on, I got permanent speed. This was really good because that meant every armor piece had a different effect. So finally, I finished it off with making a Unirith helmet. Except this time, it actually did not give me an effect, but it looked pretty cool. All I had to do now was search for three more pieces of paper, and I could spawn the end boss. I actually found the second one very close by, and I found it on the side of a hill. When I broke this one, I got an unknown letter. Surprisingly enough, in the same biome, I found the third monolith. That meant I only needed to find one more monolith, and I could spawn the Roka end boss. Unfortunately, this one probably took me over an hour to find, but I got the message in chat saying there was energy nearby, but I just couldn't find it. I tried looking in the trees and everywhere on the ground, but the cows made it hard to see because they pretty much had the same texture. But eventually, I found it pretty sneakily wedged into the ground. I got the fourth monolith and I went to crafting the final boss of the abyss. I placed the four pieces of paper in each corner and placed the ancient book in the middle and I got the abyss end. This was most likely going to teleport me to the final boss, Roka, and I was ready to fight him in day seven. Today was the final fight of the Abyss, 
and it was my way home. I wanted to make a pretty large enclosure for Roka because I didn't know how big he would be or if I would even be able to survive. Even though I had the strongest armor in the game, I don't know how strong Roka would be. For all I know, he's an ancient god and he's been around for thousands of years. He might even just insta-kill me in one shot, who knows. But anyways, I took out this crystal golem and decided to get rid of this elder boss because I didn't want any disruptions in our final fight. I put my totem in my offhand, and it was time to fight the final boss, Roka. I placed the eye in the middle, and I got prompted with a chat. It was Roka. He said he's been trying to conquer the abyss for 5,000 years, and he wanted to know if I'll help him or I'll kill him. But I knew what I was going to do. I was going to defeat him and go home. Unfortunately, he did not spawn in the box, but outside the box. Very bad start. I got really scared, so I ran into the box. I started swinging at him, and my sword barely did any damage, and he could still hit me through the box. I noticed these two knights spawned, Sylvia and Merimus. I don't know if they were going to help me in the fight or not, but they weren't moving. I started casually chipping away at the Roka's health, but unfortunately, this cow had to be caught in the crossfire. I made a promise to the cow that his death wouldn't be in vain, and that I would honor him by taking down the Roka boss. I think I got tired of staying in the box, and I decided to be brave and go outside the box. Well, almost. I dug open the wall a bit more so I could hit him easily. But so far, I think my armor was holding up because he wasn't doing more damage than half a heart. So I decided to just go for it and go outside the box and take him on one on one. Except I wasn't alone. Merimus and Sylvia started coming out of the box and attacking them. All three of us came together and formed a super team and we were all attacking the Roka boss as one. This was an incredible story, something you see in the movies. Arguably a more intense fight than Avengers Endgame. However, the Roka boss started doing more damage and started letting out some disturbing screams. I think the scream started to give me nausea. But all three of us were standing strong against the Roka boss. The Roka started focusing on the knights instead of me, and I wasn't taking any damage. But I was worried. If the knights somehow died, would I be strong enough to take on the boss alone? I didn't have time to think about any negative thoughts like that. My only goal was to take down the Roka boss as fast as possible. I think I even started swinging at Merimus and Sylvia, but I mean, they won't remember, right? But then, tragedy hit. Merimus, no! Merimus got caught in the lightning, and he didn't make it. It was up to Sylvia and I to take down the Roka boss together. And we were gonna do it in the name of Merimus. I think the key thing that got me through this fight was the Ring of Regen. Anytime I would get remotely low, I would just use my ring and I would heal up pretty quickly. The Roka boss was about to be dead. I got in a series of really good hits, and it was only a matter of time before I take down the Roka boss and I could finally go home. And then Sylvia landed the final hit. I picked up a new sword. It was called the Sword of the Abyss. The Roka also dropped some XP bottles and a music disc. Me and Sylvia actually did it. Wait a minute, didn't Sylvia scam me earlier? Yeah, you know what? I think Sylvia did scam me. Alright, after taking care of that, I looked in the water and I saw a hammer. It was called the Hammer of the Abyss, and it was super slow, but it had 25 attack damage. After picking up the hammer, I think it was time to finally head home. And I think this monolith was the key. I went over, said a quick goodbye to the Abyss, and I clicked it. But all of a sudden, my vision went dark. <laughs> 